I'm Tim from Backpacking with Buckley, and you're watching This Week in Backpacking. Welcome back to This Week in Backpacking, where your hosts, Miyagi and Trips, bring you some of the highlights this week in the world of backpacking. Trips, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? Oh, doing really well. It's starting to warm up. Summer is knocking on our doorstep here. Yes, it was very summer-like this weekend. Highs in the 90s. It sure was. We had graduation parties. We had birthday parties this week. All outside, of course. Uh-huh. And in Wisconsin, it was in the 90s. Don't know how it was out by you, but I do know in our western states, specifically in New Mexico, they're already dealing with wildfire problems. Trips, tell us what's going on in the Gila wilderness of New Mexico. This Week in Backpacking is keeping a close eye on the Johnson Fire in the Gila Wilderness of New Mexico. The fire is approximately 38,225 acres in size. The Gila Wilderness is located in southwest New Mexico and contains a small piece of the Continental Divide National Scenic Trail. Currently, this named fire does not affect travel on the CDT. Effective yesterday, June 5th, the National Park Service has closed the following areas within the Gila Wilderness. Cliff Dweller Canyon and West Fork Trail parking areas, the park bookstore at the Cliff Dweller Trailhead, the park visitor center, Cliff Dweller Canyon Trail, and the Gila Cliff Dwellings. The National Park Service and the International Dark Sky Association are pleased to announce Zion National Park as an international dark sky park. The certification recognizes the exceptional quality of the park's night skies and provides added opportunities to enhance visitor experiences through astronomy-based interpretive programming. Zion National Park is committed to conserving the park's night skies for all future generations and to educate visitors about the values of this important resource, said Jeff Brady Baugh, park superintendent. To recognize this support for dark sky conservation and interpretation, all ranger-led programming during the week of June 7th will focus on promoting Junior Ranger Night Explorer booklets and night sky themes. Please check the park website for program details and ranger-led activities. Speaking of dark sky parks, the 31st annual Grand Canyon Star Party will be held virtually June 5th through the 12th, 2021. The park will bring the wonders of the night sky into the virtual realm through a series of live video premieres on Grand Canyon's official Facebook page. Each evening from June 5th through the 12th, Grand Canyon National Park will premiere two videos at 7.30 p.m. and 9 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. The week-long Star Party speaker series will feature nine special guest speakers. Following the guest speakers, astronomers will connect video cameras to their telescopes and choose 10 to 12 celestial objects over the course of 60 to 90 minutes. Join astronomers from across the country as they develop real-time astrophotographs of galaxies and much more. The complete Grand Canyon Star Party schedule is available on the park's website. National parks such as Grand Canyon National Park help protect some of the last remaining dark skies in the country. Grand Canyon was designated as an international dark sky park in 2019. In the coming years, the park plans on making 90% of all outdoor lighting dark sky compliant. Trips, when I was in the Grand Canyon, the stars and the dark skies were absolutely incredible. You could see forever. That's awesome. I love dark skies. I know you do. So if you're into that kind of thing as well, make sure you check out the National Park website. We have the link below for their star party. Check it all out. And we also have links to books and maps, which I found useful when I visited the Grand Canyon. If you guys are enjoying this news program, please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel. And if you do, maybe we'll give you a puppy. <laughs> or at least we'll tell you some of the best dog breeds for the backcountry. <laughs> Are you someone who loves dogs but just aren't quite sure which breeds are best for hiking and backpacking? We've got a lineup of eight breeds of dogs specifically suited for the backcountry. For responsible owners, dogs can provide an extra layer of fun, partnership, and security during your outdoor adventures. Not only can they be fun partners if you provide them with a healthy diet and regular exercise, but science states that they even add years to your lifetime. Here's this week in backpacking's top eight list of backcountry canines. Labrador Retriever. This dog sits atop the United States' most popular breed for more than 20 years, and for good reason. It checks all the boxes, 
offering lots of love, loyalty, intelligence, and energy to keep up with your active lifestyle. Born with an instinct to swim, they'll be fording rivers faster than Ibi Tat in the Gila Wilderness on the CDT. Number seven is the Australian Cattle Dog. Don't be fooled by its cuteness. Behind its adorable features lies a loyal heart and a lively spirit. The Australian Cattle Dog is a very active pet that does best both outside and inside your home. The compact but muscular Australian Cattle Dog, also called the Blue Healer or Queensland Healer, is related to Australia's famous wild dog, the Dingo. These resilient herders are intelligent enough to routinely outsmart their owners. Number six is the Bernese Mountain Dog. This dog breed possesses a massive body build, but a gentle personality, making it the perfect dog to bring during group camping. The Bernese Mountain Dog enjoys all sorts of fun in nature, making it the ideal fluffy dog to hike and camp with. Number five is the Alaskan Malmute. An intensely strong, heavy duty worker, Alaskan Malmutes were originally bred to pull sleds and carts, so it's innate for them to enjoy even the most strenuous hikes and longest camping adventures. These dogs may not be as fast on trail, but you'll be amazed by their endurance. Number four is the Brittany. This dog breed is one of the smallest hunting dogs. Brittany's work best outside, may it be on land or in the water. They're jolly, extremely playful, sweet, and friendly, making them ideal companions of families who have children and active adults. Bright and eager at home and tireless afield, Brittany's require a lot of exercise, preferably with their favorite humans. Coming in at number three is the Border Collie. One of the best athletes in the canine world, Border Collies are mid-sized dogs that have high levels of energy and intelligence. A remarkably bright workaholic, the Border Collie is an amazing dog. Maybe a bit too amazing for owners without the time, energy, or means to keep it occupied. These energetic dogs will settle down for cuddle time only when the workday is done. Number two is the Siberian Husky. This dog breed was originally bred to help humans pull carts and sleds across long distances under Arctic Russian winters. Siberian Huskies are working dogs with playful spirits and loyal hearts, and they're always ready for the next adventure in the backcountry. Coming in at number one is the Australian Shepherd. The Shepherd is an intelligent, adventurous breed that's always ready to go. Originally used as herding dogs, they still excel at this job today working on ranches and in pastures throughout the world. Australian Shepherds make excellent hiking partners as they're athletic, friendly, and well-suited for long hours of strenuous activity on the trail. A hiker was injured by a grizzly bear in Yellowstone National Park last week, the first such injury in the park this year. The 39-year-old man was hiking alone on the Beaver Ponds Trail in Yellowstone National Park last week, according to a Friday statement from the park. The hiker, who was not immediately identified, encountered what he believed to be two grizzly bears, according to the statement. One of the bears made contact with the hiker, and he sustained significant injuries to his lower extremities. The man was able to continue hiking to seek help. He was taken by ambulance to a nearby hospital. Officials closed the Beaver Ponds Trail following the incident, and staff swept the trail to protect other hikers, according to the Friday statement. The incident marks the first time in 2021 that a bear has injured a person in Yellowstone. The last incident was in June 2020, according to the Friday statement, when a woman was knocked to the ground and scratched by a grizzly. On April 15th, a backcountry guide fishing alone just outside the park was attacked by a grizzly bear and died two days later. This Week in Backpacking reminds you to be bear aware. Stay 100 yards away from bears at all times. Carry bear spray in grizzly country and know how to use it. Be alert and don't wear headphones. See the bear before you surprise it. Watch for fresh tracks, scat, and feeding sites. Signs of digging, rolled rocks, torn up logs, and ripped open anthills. Make noise as you hike, talk loudly, or sing that catchy or annoying song that will stay in your hiking partner's head all day. Hike in groups of three or more people. Avoid hiking at dawn, dusk, or at night when grizzlies are most active. And don't run from a grizzly bear. It'll just look like a tasty meal trying to get away. Visit the National Park Service for more information on how to stay safe in the backcountry. You know, Trips, there's not too many things that I fear in the backcountry, but grizzlies are definitely on the top of the list of what I'm afraid of. What uh, what animals are you most afraid of? Uh, you know it's grizzlies. <laughs> We've only had to deal with black bears, and I don't know if you hike with us, you know this because we talk about it, but we're actually kind of like the bear whispers in all the trips that we've been on since 2015. Trips that I have never, ever seen a bear, let, let alone a grizzly. We, we haven't seen a black bear. Uh, only from the car while driving someplace. That's, that's true. Yeah. So if you hike with us, don't worry about bears. But... <laughs> 
Won't be a thing. It won't be a thing. I do know that there are some big bears across the pond, but I'm not sure if uh, there's any grizzlies where our world correspondent is taking us this week. Ooh, let's check in with our boy Milos and see where he's at this week. This week of backpacking, I'm going go for Milos. You're going to take a for Czech Republic in this segment, Rock. I think you are wondering, Milos, why you are say rock? Well, in Latin, word Bohemia mean Czech. Where we go now? The border of Czech Republic and Germany, separate by Elbo River, is Bohemian Switzerland. Here you're gonna find Tisa Rock Town Labyrinth, you're gonna find Krizovi Verge. Verge only for Czech is gonna mean the hill, you know, like you're gonna climb the hill or bring a dog to the hill. We also have the Pestevni Verge. We're gonna see a really cool alien spacecraft looking building. You can go up there and look at the sunset. You can go up there and view beautiful rock structure. You can view beautiful rock formation. Also gonna have Rose Ridge with view of the Elbow River. Europe's biggest sandstone arch is here in Bohemian Switzerland. The Pravchika Gate, and also second biggest sandstone arch in the whole world. If you're gonna meet the challenge of the, the Malopravchika Branja Trail, it's gonna bring you for Sonstejna Castle. Another one of the amazing rock formation you are gonna find Bohemian Switzerland. If you are have the mean, you can take a train from Prague and be there very quick, see hotel, you can maybe go for a boat ride there, everything here, Bohemian Switzerland is where Milos go for world news, this week in the backpack. Thanks for watching Around the World of Milos. Mm -hmm. Bohemian Switzerland in the Czech Republic. Now, that looks like some pretty amazing hiking. But I got to tell you, Trips, I'm kind of bummed that uh, that Milos didn't talk about the fantastic beer that they have over there. And the food. I'm sure they probably have amazing food. Yeah. So make sure you check that out. Do your own research. I mean, I'd love to go to Bohemian Switzerland. Um, when I was over in Europe, the food actually was amazing, and the beer was even more amazinger. But... That's uh, that's another story. All right, Trips, let's check in with our guy, Harry, over at Big Agnes. He's going to tell us all about the upgrades of the new Tiger Wall UL tents. Hey, I'm Harry with Big Agnes, and I'm here to tell you about the improved Tiger Wall UL and Tiger Wall UL Mountain Glow tents. Our award-winning Tiger Wall UL two and three person and Mountain Glow models are our lightest two-door, two-vestibule technical backcountry tents and now redesigned with solution dyed fabric, also available in one person. We've sourced solution dyed fabric used on the fly, floor, and breathable fabric to drastically reduce water and energy use during manufacturing, a process that's better for the environment and improves the quality of the tent fabric as it's more UV resistant and color fast. By solution dyeing our tent fabrics, we reduce energy consumption by 80% and water use by 50% compared to traditional fabric dyeing methods. Now upgraded with our proprietary tent corner construction and unique tip lock tent buckle to simplify setup. Combining three functions, secure pull tip capture, rainfly attachment and tensioner, and stake out loop. You'll be pitched in a cinch. This buckle has a keyed hole so the pull tip locks securely into place during setup and hinge design stabilizes structure by equalizing forces between the tent body, rainfly, and ground stake. The Tigerwall UL is known for its single pole architecture using DAC Featherlight aluminum to create a simple yet strong and sturdy shelter you can rely on through multi-day trips. 
Our Tiger Wall UL Mountain Glow Tent provides the same dependability and incredibly lightweight features with the added bonus of ambient Mountain Glow tent light technology. No need for bulky lanterns or headlamps shining too bright in these tents. For both models, we've included our new 6-inch Dirt Dagger UL tent stakes, designed with patent-pending I-beam aluminum construction. You can't miss the orange anodized finish, and you'll notice the difference with a 25% increase in strength-to-weight ratio, our lightest and strongest stakes ever. These tents provide plenty of storage for this and that, plus a 3D storage bin at the foot for everything else, and clean earbud cord routing for listening to tunes or your favorite podcast quietly in the backcountry. Don't forget, these tents can be set up in fast fly mode using just the fly, poles, and footprint. Perfect for those hot summer nights on trail or when there's no energy left for a full setup. I prefer fast fly mode if I need to shed extra weight on an overnight and can make do without the tent body taking up space. The reimagined Tiger Wall Ultralight line was built for fast and light adventures with performance and sustainability at the core. He got with Sharon, and Sharon got Sharice. She was Sharon Sharon's outlook on the topic of disease. Mikey had a facial scar, and Bobby was a racist. They were all in love with Di, and they were doing it in Texas. Tommy played piano like a kid out in the rain. If you haven't found this guy yet on YouTube, you've been missing out. Tim Buckley from Backpacking with Buckley is a Midwest resident of South Dakota. Relatively new to the YouTube stage, Tim brings an awesome style to the scene with his editing and music, a combination that makes him stand out above the rest. On his channel, you'll find many of his adventures, shared with both friends and family. Tim's a regular on the social media circuit, and you'll often find him commenting on videos and an active participant in the various live feeds throughout the backpacking community. Tim's message to everyone, be yourself and be happy. If you haven't already, make sure you check Tim out on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Tim over at Backpacking with Buckley is on the top of my list in 2021 of people who I'd love to hike with. You know, we've talked about it before, we comment in each other's videos, and he seems like a pretty cool cat, so make sure you get over and check out his uh, YouTube channel, and uh, show him some love, and make sure you comment down in one of the videos, let him know that Miyagi and Trips sent you, we'd appreciate that. And while we've still got you here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification so that we can send your youngest child a four pack of Red Bull and a puppy. That's right. Maybe we'll send you one of those Bernie's Mountain Dogs. Be a great hiking companion. <laughs> if you guys have any news to share with us, maybe some new gear or uh, a new segment for the program, make sure you drop us a line at thisweekinbackpacking at gmail.com. It's going to wrap it up for this week. Guys, thanks again for tuning in, and we will see you next week on This Week in Backpacking. Take care. You guys take care.